<laughs> what do you mean by that? The land of the living. Because those that, that's not in Christ, they are dead like you and I. We was dead in our sins and our transgression. But through the mushyak that we are alive. Amen? That's what I mean about that. Oh, I'm excited for our preparation uh, as we get ready for the Feast of Shavuot uh, in a few weeks. And we're going to be having a celebration here, kicking off at 5 o'clock. Going to have the little, uh, you know, a, a, a teaching. Going to have water baptism for those that want to be mikvah in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Amen. So we're going to have games and food. So I'm excited uh, about the congregation coming together. We want to invite any church uh, that is listening. Y'all, please come. You don't have to worry about bringing nothing. We will prepare everything for you. And so, uh, guys, if you're listening, please share, post with your family and friends. That that time would be June, uh, June the 9th, June the 9th, uh, which would be on a Sunday at 5 o'clock on 5 to 8 or 5 until we ready to go home. Uh, so I want to invite everyone to come out to the Feast of Pentecost. That is the Feast of Shavuot, June the 9th at 5 o'clock at 2828 Texas Avenue, if you don't know the address. Okay, so I want to invite all the churches to come out. And let us know, guys, if you're coming. And so those who are watching, post it, share it with your family and friends so they can have an experience and find out and discover what the, the Feast of Pentecost is really about. Amen? Now, tonight I want to do an introduction teaching on uh, the Apostles' Doctrine. I want to do that tonight. So if you see the title on there, it's called the Apostles' Doctrine. But tonight I want to uh, talk about laying the foundation. This is very important, you know, very important that, that when we begin to build our, uh, our walk or begin to uh, walk or uh, grow in Yah, that is Elohim, we must have what is called a proper foundation. You have to understand that many of us have heard many teachings. We heard about this. We heard about that. But many believers, as I, as I discover, don't have a proper foundation. The foundation has not been laid properly. And you're going to see in the midst of this study, and I, and I hope you stay, stay tuned with me because I want to take my time and lay the foundation. Because the foundation, when it comes to foundation, you might not think a foundation is in, in valuable, but it's, your house is standing because there is a foundation. Well, if there's no foundation, then the builder has nothing to build on. So the foundation is the most important part of a building. I'm telling you, it's not the shingles. It's not the wood, okay? It's not the stuff that you put in the house, uh, your nice TV or your, your nice furniture or whatever it may be. That ain't the most important part of the house. The most important part of the house is the foundation. And that's why I want to talk to you tonight about the foundation. Because if you don't have a proper foundation, then you ain't going to be able to stand when the trials and tribulation comes in your life. So that's why I want to lay down tonight, laying the foundation, and then we will begin to build on the apostle doctrine. So very important. Now, in 1931 uh, is when they begin to build what is what we call the, uh, the world uh, they called uh, the Empire State Building. I want to read something to you tonight, okay, before we get started. The Empire State Building uh, was built in 1931. And it said that it was over 10 million bricks weighing 60 tons of steel. And the cost of this building was $40 million. It was 1,453 feet tall, okay? This was the skyscraper. Now, this is amazing that when they put everything together with the bricks and the steel, it weighed over 365,000 tons. That's a building right there. Now, as I begin to look at this here, so I like, okay, how they know, 
how deep the foundation has to be. Think about that. If the building is going to weigh 365,000 tons, then we got to do some calculation because I got to determine what proper foundation needs to be laid for this building. Because if I don't, the building is not going to be able to stand. It is said that the Empire State Building foundation is 55 feet. That's a deep foundation. It's 55 feet deep. It has 86 floors. Now, watch this here. So now they understand this here, that the foundation of the building of the Empire State Building, they calculated that for something to hold 365,000 tons, we have to determine that it has to have a foundation able to hold. Am I right? So now, watch this here. Because before they begin to add to the building, or should I say the foundation, they had to make sure the foundation is able to support these 365,000 tons or 86 floor. Now, that's important. Why? Because if men and women are going to be in that building, I want to make sure that the contractors and the construction workers did not cheat the foundation. Y'all need to understand? Uh, listen, this is very important because when you're in a building, you're eating in a restaurant or whatever you're working in, whatever, don't you want to make sure that the contractor didn't cut or make short of the foundation? You might can cut on the roof, huh? Uh, uh, use cheap this on the roof or, uh, 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 or the, uh, the windows or whatever, but you don't want to cheat the foundation. Why? Because the foundation is what holds the building together. This is very important. This is very important. I'm taking my time because many of you don't have a proper foundation laid. So now, if we put that kind of emphasis on the foundation of a building, ought not we ought to put that kind of emphasis on our spiritual foundation? Think about that. On our spiritual foundation. And many, listen, just like in the natural, okay? I'm going to take my time. Just like in, in the natural, that when you see, when you pass by a construction site and you see them working and, and, and tear down trees and, and just, oh, just just a lot of work going, and it'd be like months before you even see a building. Am I right? It could be like six months to a year. Why? Because they're working on the foundation. They're trying, they're shooting the levels and doing all these things to us doesn't seem like it's important. But the people that have been trained and the architects, they understand that what they're building has to have a proper foundation. And so this is what I, I want us to see tonight. You're building a, a building that's better than the building that you're in right now. Uh-huh. I'm going to show you a, a scripture here. Go to Hebrews for a moment. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. I'm going to show you something here. Because the Bible said that we are, we are Yah building. We are his builder. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3. And I'm going, I'm going to pick it up in verse, uh, let's pick it up in verse 3. For this man Moses, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 3. For this man was counted Moses. More glory than Moses. And as much as he who what? Build the house has more glory than the house. In other words, we don't worship the house, but what about the builder who built the house? Verse 4. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is Elohim, that is God. Verse 5. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were uh, which were spoken of afterward. Verse 6, but Christ, a son over his own house, who house we are. Do you hear that? So we are Christ's house. So we are Christ's house. So he's building. He's building the house the way he wants the house to look. Now, watch it here. I, I want to show you something else. Uh, so if, if we are, are the house, then who the foundation is? Well, I'm going to show you that. 
go to uh, chapter 3. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So now we saw that we are the house, right? So now every house need, need a foundation. Am I correct? Every house need a foundation. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Paul says here, I'm going to pick it up in verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are labeled together with Elohim. Ye are Elohim husband, that is thine yard, and Elohim what? Building. See how it's building? Building. According to the grace which are given unto me as a what? Wise master builder. This word master builder is architect. It's where we get the word architect from. So, so everybody that's listening, everybody that's here, I can't say it. Most of us don't know how to read blueprints. But the guy who's in charge of building the building know how to read the blueprint. And so I got to trust him that if he tell me to put something right there, that means he read the blueprint. Am I right? So the word of God is the blueprint. Why? Because he knows how he wants the house to be built. That's, a, that's about the simplest I can say it. Now, Paul says here that he is a wise master builder or architect. I have laid the foundation. Notice that. I have laid what? The foundation. And another build their own. On, their own. Sorry. But let every man take heed how he build what? Their own. So now he's building. Why? Why, Paul? Why? I got to be careful how I build on it. Verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Yeshua HaMashiach. So Messiah is the foundation. We the building. He's the foundation. Okay, and the word of Yah is the architect that tells us how things is to be done. Moses, when Moses came down Mount Sinai with the uh, tablets, and then not only came down with that, he came down the second time, he came down with the blueprint for the tabernacle. Am I right? So now Moses had a blueprint. Two times Moses was warned, build it. According to the pattern. In other words, Moses, don't add to it or take away. Moses was told that. So now we see that we are the building. Hebrews chapter 3. Messiah is the foundation. Okay? Remember, the foundation is the most important part of this building. Now, Let's go to a text. I want to show you something here. Let's go to uh, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. So now, what we're doing now is laying the foundation before we move on. And so I want you to see how important is the foundation, okay? I'm going to show you why I got the title for, uh, from Apostle Doctrine. It says here in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, we'll pick it up in verse 19. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of Elohim. Watch this here, verse 20. And are built upon what? The foundation of the apostles. Did you hear that? The foundation of the apostles. So what he's saying? That the foundation of the apostles, the apostles are the foundation for the church. Or the teaching. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Keep that in mind. And built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophet and Yeshua HaMashiach being the chief cornerstone. Verse 21, and, 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 and whom all the building, there we go again, fits frame together, grow into a holy temple unto Jehovah. So now we are told that the apostles are the foundation. Why is that? Well, I'm going to show you here. Go to Acts. Let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 2. So we are told here that, that the church is built on the apostles' doctrine. And we know for a fact that the apostle was trained by Yeshua. 
And Yeshua said that his doctrine is not his own, but his father. Now, watch this here. This is at the Feast of Shavuot, the Feast of Pentecost. And we know that according to the text, that 3,000 were baptized. So that means that 3,000 came to the knowledge and faith of, of, of Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm going to pick it up in verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 41. Watch this here. And they, then they that gladly received his words were what? Baptized. And the same day was added to them about 3,000 souls, right? Now watch this verse here. And they continued steadfast in what? The apostles' what? Doctrine. And fellowship and breaking in bread, all right? In prayer. Now, apostle doctrine, that is teaching. They continued. In the apostles' teaching. That's all the word means, teaching. Doctor means teaching. And so now the question again, where did the apostles get their teaching from? Where they got it from? Yeshua. Who Yeshua said that my doctrine is not my own, but my father that sent me. Now, I'm going to give you the, uh, the Greek word for the word doctrine in a minute. You can find it right quick. Out of here, I'll put it in here. Let's see what y'all is what I want to give you. Uh, we have the Greek here in 13, 19, and 13:20. And it simply means instruction and teaching. Now, we look at the word, which means simple, uh, a simple form means teaching and instruction. Uh, that's the word for Torah, because the word Torah means teaching and instruction we try to at the word we translate it as law but it simply means teaching and instruction okay very important we ain't even got started yet so we see that the apostle doctrine or that the church was built on the apostle doctrine other words the apostles took what they learned from yeshua and they laid the foundation they didn't change nothing. They didn't come in and say, well, you know that, that Yeshua not here. Jesus ain't here. So we're going to do something different around there. No. The church, the first century church, was built on the apostle doctrine. And so when we get to the apostle doctrine that is called elementary in the book of Hebrews chapter 6, you'll see that. These are what the apostles knew. These was what was called the elementary teaching which we're going to begin to, to learn these things as we go through the teaching, okay? Now, let's go to uh, 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 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Now, this is very interesting because when we talk about building, okay, when we talk about building something that the Most High is not like, uh, he's different. He's a, he's a, uh, what I would call the master architect, that he's not going to work on the uh, outside. He's going to work in the inside. Because when he began to work in our life, and this would get people in trouble, because they won't take time out to uh, build a foundation or lay the foundation. They jump from church to church. They watch all this stuff on the internet and YouTube, and, 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 and they're not laying a proper foundation. Man, to lay, listen, God, let me just talk to you for a moment. To lay a foundation, a spiritual foundation, it takes time. You got to hit the books. You can't now watch all, all the uh, best TV shows on and your favorite programs. I mean, uh, uh, you can't and, and, and have a proper foundation. You just can't. It's very important that you spend time in the Word. And so that's why I don't want to hop around teaching something. I want to lay a foundation. And I'm going to start with the basic because the writer of Hebrews, he gives us a rebuke because he said for the time come, you ought to be teachers. You still need someone to teach you. And so that's a strong statement because you know that many of us have been in church a long time and still don't know the fundamental basis of our faith. Now, I was talking to my brother the other day. And so I'm just talking to him, just, you know, uh, stirring him up. And just 
plant seeds in them. And I'm coming to the point in my life that I really don't care what you believe. I want you to explain to me why you believe it. I'm going to say that again. I Listen, I don't really care what you believe. But explain to me why you believe it. See, I, I listen, I want to bring you to the point that you believe this book, right? You believe this book. But why do you believe this book? Why do you believe Yeshua is the son of God? Why do you believe that he's coming back? I mean, why? Because I said it? Because your mama said it? No, 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 no. I want you to become like the Bereans. In Acts chapter 17, it says they search the scriptures. And so I want to challenge you as, as I begin to study, as we begin to study, I want to challenge you, okay? I really do. I want to challenge you to take time in the book. I want you to take time and together, okay? Together that we will lay a proper foundation. We will go over basic things. Uh, the doctrine of repentance from dead works. Faith towards God. The doctrine of baptism. The doctrine of laying on hands. The doctrine of eternal judgment. Huh? Uh, the resurrection and the doctrine of eternal judgment. These are basic teachings that the writer of Hebrew says is elementary. And so guys, I want y'all to hang in there with me. As we go through these six to seven lessons, and we're going to be using the book, and I want to be able to to uh, to lay a help you to lay a proper foundation. But I'm telling you, it takes time. You got to be willing to put forth the effort. You got to be willing. Okay, like now, if you're watching me now and you just listening to me, you ain't got no pencil, you ain't got no paper, you ain't writing nothing. Come on, that's part of the foundation. Because why? I need, after those cameras go off, I need you to verify everything I just said. That's how you begin to lay a foundation. You go and verify these things, what I said. So now, as we continue tonight, I told you to go to uh, First Timothy, right? First Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Listen to this here. Shaul tells Timothy, Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine, right? To, to your teaching. Take heed to yourself and the doctrine. Continue in them. Why? For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those that hear you. Man, listen. I, listen. I ain't trying to just stand up here and preach and then go, go to hell myself. No, no, no. I want to be a doer of the word. I want to be a doer of the word. I definitely want to be a doer of the word. So doctrine is very important. Like I said, I don't care what you believe. I want to know, can you explain why you believe that? From the Bible. Acts chapter 17, again, the Bereans was more noble than those in Thessalonians. Why? Because they searched the scriptures. And I want to train you, I want to encourage you that when you study with me, open your Bible, highlight your stuff, get your marker. You understand? Get your marker. Mark that thing up. Don't be scared of that thing. I know a, a, a young man didn't want to write in the Bible. Man, mark that thing up so that you'll be able to find it when you share it with somebody. So when I'm talking about I want to bring you to the point that you're not afraid for people to ask you questions. Think about that. See, I ain't afraid for you to ask me nothing. That's why after my teaching, that I open the floor for questions. I mean, if you don't know what you're teaching, then you need to sit down. But I open the floor because I study. And then I'm smart enough to realize if I don't know, know the answer right then, I get back with you. Huh? Why? Because I'm a student too. I'm learning. I don't know everything. So I want to encourage us as we go through our study. Have your pencil of paper and your scriptures. Now, let's go to uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 7. I like this here because this is Yahshua. 
Jesus, the Messiah, he's talking. We're going to look at chapter 7. Now, I like this here because he goes through the Beatitudes in chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. So he, he, he's teaching what I would call uh, the Sermon on the Mountain or the Seminary. And he's teaching this to his disciples. But what, what I want you to pay attention to is that he's going to tell them, now, I know you heard me, but that that's on the beginning because it's not you hearing me is what you're going to do after that. So he's he going to separate two groups, one who obey and one who don't. Now, watch this here. In Matthew chapter 7, we're going to pick it up in verse 24. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Now, watch what he says here about those who build it. He's talking about building a firm foundation. He said, now, therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and does them, I would like him into what? A wise man, which, which did what? A wise man, which what? Built his house upon a rock. That's a foundation. A rock. He built his house upon a rock. Solid. And when the rain ascended, the flood came, and the wind blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. Why didn't the house fall? Because of the foundation. Because mm. it was built upon a rock. The rock. Now watch this here. I'm going to show you something here. Who is the rock? Go with me. Who is this rock? Let's go to, uh, let's check out Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter, let's do, let me see, I'm going to find it right quick. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32. So now he said that he who hear my word and does them, I will like him as a kokma, a wise man who built his house upon the rock. Now, let's discover who this rock is. Deuteronomy chapter 32. We'll pick it up in verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 1. Give ear, O you heaven. Now, this is Moses speaking to the children of Israel. And I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My teaching, that is doctrine, shall drop as rain, my speech shall distill as dew, and the rain or the small rain upon the tender earth as the shower upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of Jehovah, ascribe you greatness unto our Elohim. Watch this here. Verse 4. He is what? The rock. Mm. He is what? The rock. Jehovah is that rock that that's that Yeshua mentioned. He who so otherwise he's saying, if you obey the word, you're building your house on the rock, which is Jehovah. Watch this here. Uh, let's go to First Corinthians. So the text tells us here that Jehovah is the rock. Our Elohim is that rock. First Corinthians chapter 10. Let me get that. First Corinthians chapter 10. I'm going to go on for uh, the sake of my index. Let's just start at verse 1. Moreover, brothers, that is First Corinthians chapter 10. More brothers, I would not that you be uh, ignorant that how that all our fathers were under the clouds and all passed through the Red Sea. Now, we know we're talking about the children of Israel, right? History lesson. And all were baptized to Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Verse 3. And did all eat the same spiritual meat and all did drink the same spiritual drink, for they drunk of their what? Spiritual rock. You see? Now, you notice how they got rock capitalized the same way they had capitalized in Deuteronomy. So Moses say our rock is Elohim. They say that the rock is Messiah. So here it is again. Yes, he is Elohim. 
So when we get back to Matthew and he said that, go back here. So we saw in Deuteronomy that Elohim is the rock. We see here that the rock that followed them in, in the wilderness was Yahshua, the rock. They wanted the same. So now when we get back to chapter 7, verse 24 again, and he said that if you obey me, the person who obey me, meaning obey the word of God, he's building a house upon a rock. Just that simple. If you're not building your house on the word of God and obeying the word of God, then your house is being built on what? Watch this here. Everyone that does, everyone that does, I'm sorry, and, and everyone that hear it, these sayings are mine. Same teaching, two groups. Same teaching, two groups. I'm sorry. And does them not shall be likened to what? A foolish man. So we got a wise man, foolish man. Was built his house upon what? Sand. He built his house upon sand. Now, you know if you build a house on sand, it's going to shift. Am I right? And the rain ascended, and the flood came, the wind blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So notice, after Yeshua finished teaching, verse 28 says, And it came to pass when Yeshua ended it, these sayings, the people was astonished at his what? Doctrine, his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as a scribe. So Yeshua's laying the foundation down to the audience that's watching. They love his beautiful words. But at the end of his message, he said, now listen, listen what I just taught is, is not going to profit you anything if you don't obey. See, I can be the best teacher. I can teach good stuff, but if you're not going to obey, if, if, if you're going to take what I say and just throw it aside, then it's not going to profit you. It's not going to do nothing for you. See, James said that I have to be a, a, a doer of the word and not a hearer. Not a hearer only, but a doer. So Yeshua telling us that if we're going to build, if I'm going to begin to build, I had to have my mind made up that I got to obey. Because I can build and build and build and build and build, but I'm not obeying. Your life is like saying, soon a trial of tribulation come, you blow it away. And everybody thought that you were so strong. But all you was doing was just showing up at a building, running around shouting like you're spiritual. Listen, my beloved, to dig and to lay a foundation, you got to dig deep. Am I right? Dig deep. So now, if that's the case, as, as we talked about earlier, for because they was going up with the Empire State Building, 86 floors, because they was going up, they knew they had to go down. I, 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 listen, I hope you catch that. If you want to go up with Yah, if you want to go up in the kingdom, up, up, up in the kingdom, you got to go down. You got to dig deep. You got to allow the spirit of Yah through his word to work underground. To work underground. Not trying to be in the ministry. Not trying to, you know, be the fivefold. Trying to be the, no, dig deep. Get, get rooted and grounded. Very important. Ain't no superstars in the kingdom trying to encourage you because most people ain't going to tell you that. They're not going to tell you that. So when the Most High began to work in a believer life, he's not working on the outside. He's working in the inside. He's an inside job. <laughs> Y'all heard that thing, inside job? It's an inside job. He's working in the inside. When you look at these people working in these uh these fields, building these uh you know these big buildings and stuff like that, it seems like they ain't doing nothing. Like man, I I, I see the bulldozer moving, I see this moving, it seems like they ain't doing nothing. Then all of a sudden you pass by there, it's a whole building up. Why? Because they understand the proper foundation must be laid. 
my beloved, to other people or even to you, it may not look like y'all doing nothing. But I'm telling you, he's an inside job. You continue to let him work in the inside. Don't worry about how other people look. Don't even worry about that. Don't even look at other people building. Just know what he's doing inside of you. He's building inside of you. He Listen, it's an inside job. No other foundation can a man lay than that which is the Mushia. Let him build. Be patient. He's the great architect. He knows what he's doing. And then you have, listen, you got one working inside you called the Ruach. He's working inside of you. Telling you that brick don't go here. That don't go down. So he's working in the inside of you. Very important. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 5. The book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Y'all right? Just trying to lay a little foundation for us this evening. That's all. Just trying to lay a little foundation. A little foundation for us. Mouth a little dry, but that's okay. Write this scripture here down. I didn't give it to you early, but write this scripture here down. Job, Job chapter uh, 38, verse 4. In this text here, verse right there, Job chapter 38, verse 4, the Most High asked Job, Where was you when I laid the foundation? <laughs> oh, where was you? So no, notice this here. Where was you when I laid the foundation of the earth? So the earth has a foundation. Before he began to, to build, he laid a foundation. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15 and 16 said that he lay in Zion, a true, uh, a true foundation. He's talking about Yahshua. Yahshua is that foundation. That's why Paul said no other man can build upon that. Messiah is the foundation. Hebrews chapter 5, I said, right? Now, we're going to start at verse 12. We're going to go through chapter 6, probably uh, stop at verse 4. So if, if you take a note out there, Hebrews chapter 5, uh, start at verse 12 through chapter 6, uh, verse 3. Okay, now watch what the writer says. You know, I know I hear some people say, well, I don't want to be this. I don't want to be the teacher. I don't want to be this. And listen, you ought to be growing. That ain't no excuse to my, listen, I ain't talking about standing up here. This is a calling right here. This is called a five-fold ministry. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. That's a five-fold ministry right there. That's a calling. But everybody ought to be able to teach what they're learning or share what they're learning. You ought to be able to share these things. So when the writer of Hebrews, listen what it says, and you ought to be ashamed if you can't. He says here, verse 12, for when the time come, you ought to be teachers. So, in other words, the writer assumed that you ought to be growing. Because I know I expect my son, who's in uh, first grade now, I expect him to learn. I expect him to know, huh, you know, left hand from the right hand, uh, know uh, circles and squares and colors, ABC. We want them to uh, to learn. I mean, we, we want to see the progress of our children. Am I right? So now, as a teacher myself, I want to see the progress of my students. Because everybody that sits here, if, if you've been here for, uh, for six months, you ought to know the alphabets. You ought to know the Hebrew alphabets. You ought to know all the books of, of the Bible. And I ain't even talking about back and forward. But you ought to challenge yourself. But the books of the Bible, listen, the Hebrew alphabet, if you're going to study it with me, you got to know the Hebrew alphabets and the books of the Bible. Why? Because I ain't got time to be waiting on you, slowing us up when I say turn to the book of Haggai. Now, I'm talking about, I'm talking about older, I ain't talking about new people. Because I wait on the sheep who just coming in. But I'm talking about those that have been sitting with me for a while. 
And that's why I keep telling y'all, uh, you better learn your book, the pages. Now, after, listen, after you have learned the pages, then go on in and, 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 and use your electronic. But if, if, if the electronic is all you know, then I prefer you to memorize and familiarize yourself with these pages right here. Very important. So now he says, for when the time comes, you ought to be teachers. You ought to be able to teach. And that's what I try to tell people when they come here. Take the notes, go home, and look them up, okay? Don't become a, a, note, ex, a note expert. But go home and examine the text. I'm not telling you nothing that I didn't used to do. I'm not telling you nothing that I ain't used to do. I, I, you think I just learned this stuff sitting in front of a, a, a TV seven days a week? I don't make any excuses. Well, you know, I just, you know, when I start reading, I get sleepy. Well, stand up and read then. <laughs> stand up and read. Turn on some lights. Get out that love seat. Stop waiting till bedtime. Listen. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2 says, As newborn babe, you are to desire the sincere milk of the word. Why? That you may grow. Listen, let me go on record right now. If you don't desire the word of God, you ain't growing. I promise you, you ain't growing. I don't care what you listen, I don't care what you say. You ain't growing. I don't care if you beat the doors down in here. If you don't desire the word of God outside this building, you are not growing. And if you don't have a desire for the word of God, you need to, you need to be kind of scary. Because if you're born again, you have to have a desire for the word. If you say you're born again and you don't have a desire for the word, then I need to talk to you. Because why? When sheep are not acting right, there's sometimes that because of their fur, uh, uh, the shepherd knows that there's something wrong with his sheep. So he had to go pay attention to the sheep and, and, and maybe a bug has tapped itself like a leech. Mm -hmm. Like dogs catch leech, leech uh, sheep does too. See, some of you have some human leeches. <laughs> I said it. Some of you got some human leeches that they're just sucking you dry. Sucking you dry. You need to get them. Listen, you need to get you a, 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 a Torah tag and get them away from you. They're sucking you dry. Get around somebody that study. They help you light your fire. The scripture says again, for when the time comes, you ought to be teaching. You assume that you are. That is the time that you ought to be teaching. You can't not be in, 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 in. now in some churches, you can because they ain't teaching nothing. But here, you ought to be learning some stuff here. He said you ought, you ought to be teaching, right? You have need that one teach you again which be the first principle of the oracles of Elohim and are becoming such as have need of milk and not strong meat. So now he, he's going to put us in the category of baby and adult. A baby can't eat steak. A baby uh, don't have the ability to chew yet. So he's saying to believers, see, listen, to to have strong bones, you need milk, right? Right? So a baby needs milk. So the word of God is saying that milk. Milk. Peter said, first Peter, right? First Peter 2:2 two, two, said, desire the sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow. So basic, this is what we're gonna learn. The basic things here is milk. But this is how you grow. This is how you grow. See, I know that people that want to learn the deep things, oh, the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel. See, that's, that's me. You need to get the basic first, the basic things. We'll deal with that later on. But basic things, which we're going to see in this text here. Uh, verse 3. 
Verse 13. For everyone that used milk is what? Is unskilled in the word of Zadik righteous. You don't know what you're talking about. You're a baby. You don't know what you're talking about. You're a baby. Trying to run your mouth all the time. Then if, if somebody put your butt on the spot, you don't know what to say. If you can't, listen, if I call you out, I ought to be able to call anyone in here to teach something. Uh huh. To teach something. But if you say, well, now I ain't ready, then, but you've been here for three years. What you mean you ain't ready? The scriptures tell us to be ready in season and out of season. You ought to be able to explain and teach certain things. I'm not saying you know, that you got to teach for you no know, two hours, but I'm saying you ought to be able to teach something for 30 minutes. Hmm. Hmm. Verse 13 again. For everyone that used milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For why? He is a babe, a nephew. He's an infant. Okay? So you put an infant up here, he going to boo-boo all over himself. <laughs> he going to boo-boo all over oh, the word. Because why? He don't know how to write and divide the word. That's why the scripture tells us don't put a, 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 a infant in the ministry too soon. Don't put a young person in the ministry too soon because he had a had a, had a hot sermon one time. No, 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 no. Let it be tried. But then he goes on to say, verse 14, but strong meat belong to them that are telos, mature. Okay? They can handle these things. They can handle authority. They can handle responsibility. They can handle rebuke. They can wait. They ain't quick trying to get in the ministry. So strong me, strong teaching. Belong to them that are full of age, even those, watch this, even those who by reason of use, having their senses exercised to, to discern good and evil. What do you mean? Now that I'm growing in the faith, I understand that the movies that I used to watch in my nippio or my breakfast stage, I don't watch them anymore. Why? Because I'm growing. Think about that. If, 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 if you're still watching the same shows that you used to watch last year or the year before or five years from now, then uh, you're not growing. Because why? This is a book of holiness. And I know a lot of shows that we should be watching. Why? Because they ain't got nothing to do with holiness. Music. Lie. If the music don't, don't have my mind fixed on your show, how much you shouldn't be listening to it. Oh, I, listen, I'm just being honest. I got to protect my mind. I like certain songs, but I, as I said uh other day that 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 this is how you know if the music is, is that you listen to is 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 is, is fit is 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 good is wholesome is that when you listen to it what does it what does it tells you to do uh, what you want to do after you finish listening to it so case in point that if I'm riding around or I'm riding and I'm listening to music and and it made me want to go fornicate that music ain't good huh if it make me want to go party hit the clubs that music ain't good but if i'm driving and, and i got the music that made me want to lift my hands and say oh praise you oh praise for his glory see i listen i want to listen to music that that, that bring glory to him that, that that brings out the best in me because why i know there's evil in me I know there ain't no good thing in me. So why I want to stir it up? Why I want to stir it up? Now, I'm going to read these four things. I mean, uh, 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 chapter 6, 1 through 3, and then we're going to shut down. And so this is what's called the apostle doctrine. I'm, I'm going to read it to you. Elementary, and these are the things that we're going to study. And so now, this is a challenge, a challenge I want you to, uh, to uh, do. Memorize chapter uh, 5. 
Start at verse 6 through chapter 6, uh, verse uh, verse 2. So, and listen, this is how you do it. Write it down, chapter 5, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Start at verse 12 through chapter 6, verse uh, 2. Write it down on, on, on cards, okay? And this is what I, I want you to do. And read them seven times a day for a week. Seven times a day. Now, watch this. Don't try to memorize them. Just read it seven times a day. And I guarantee you, at the end of the week, just by you reading it seven times a day, you're going to memorize half of it. Okay? And then read it again another seven times, another week. And watch how you memorize those things. But when the time comes, you ought to be teachers. You have need one to teach you again. Very elementary. Preach. I mean, you begin to learn these things. Okay? Now, watch this here. Chapter 6. Therefore, leaving the principle of the doctrine of Messiah, let us go on to perfection, not land again. What? The foundation of repentance from dead works, faith towards God, the doctrine of baptism, and land on hands, and the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. This we will do if Elohim permit. So now when we come back this Thursday, if the Most High say the same, we're going to pick up on our first teaching and that teaching is going to be repenting from dead works. Amen. Father, we bless you. We thank you again. Uh, I, did, I did my best, Father, just to lay a little foundation or to show my brothers and sisters the importance of laying a foundation. I pray that, uh, that they will see that, that the foundation is important of any building. I'm sure that they agree with that. So help us to, to uh, uh, as we recognize that in the natural, that we will recognize that even more spiritual. Because this house, this house has to be built on the foundation of your word. And enlarge our heart and give us a heart to obey your word. Because we can hear and hear and hear and learn and learn and learn. But if we're not obeying, then we're building our house on the sand. It's not going to last. And so we just thank you right now, Father. Prepare me. Prepare those who are watching and listening. And those who will come, uh, that we may lay a proper foundation. Help them in their to memorize Hebrews chapter five, verse twelve through Hebrews chapter six, verse uh, 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 two. And so we just thank you to evening this evening. Uh, we need you. Thank you this evening. Let me close. My mouth will get so dry. Father, we bless you again. May your hope bless thee, keep thee. May your hope make his face shine upon thee and be glorious to thee. May you hope to lift those coming from thee and give thee peace. May you hope to score all the chaos in your life. In the mighty name of Yeshua Hamashiach, Amen and Amen. Oh, I apologize. I don't know why my mouth so dry. So if I sound a little raggedy, pray for me. Much love, my brothers and sisters. Shalom.